Yeah, you'll have to forgive me. I have a cold, so I'm a little, uh, voice is a little jacked. But I had uh, the flu on Sunday and Monday. Had to drive my sick self 15 miles to Los Angeles for a COVID test. The results came back last night. I'm negative. And I'm really glad, obviously, though, my doctor says, don't be so excited by a negative. If you're symptomatic, your negative could be false. Wait till your symptoms are gone before you consider yourself truly negative. And so uh, the thing is, I wonder, <laughs> there was no infrastructure for this test. The place, the uh, Christian Crenshaw Center, was overwhelmed with people. And when I put my uh, my swab test kit in the like mailbox thing, I think I said this, it was so packed with test kits, I had to stick my hand in there. I told my wife, I think I got exposed to COVID putting my hand in that mailbox. They should have dumped that thing a long time ago, man. But, you know, they're overwhelmed. And if you see me sick next week, it's not from the flu I got last week. It's from going to get a COVID-19 test. So uh, I wanted to update you on that and... Uh, I was thinking of something, uh, I listen to Joe Rogan sometimes, <clears throat> his podcast, I guess a lot of people do. I think a lot of people, I'll listen to him. Uh, I think he was talking to Josh Barnett in the summer, Josh Barnett's an MMA fighter. And uh, Rogan was talking about motivational speakers who are on YouTube. And he says, a lot of these people don't resonate with me because they haven't achieved anything. You know, anyone can spew a bunch of cliches about motivation, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough get tougher. I remember seeing that on a, in a gym when I was a kid. And I agree with Mr. Rogan about that, I do, but I also think that it's in our human nature to help and motivate people. I think in life, especially with family and friends, we see people in a rabbit hole, and it's our human nature to want to get a, a tree branch and give it to them so they can grab the tree branch and we can help pull them out. And of course, they have to want to grab the tree branch. It can't be all us. And part of motivation is to get people to want to even grab the tree branch. And some people don't. And I wanted to look at reasons why people won't grab that tree branch. When you're offering them help and you know your motives or, you know, I think we have a certain amount of built-in altruism, but also I think we do it to help ourselves because by persuading other people to do the right thing and the good thing and the healthy thing, we're kind of making the case for ourselves. So I think our motives are mixed, but that's fine. That's a good thing. But I want to talk about uh, six defenses people have when they resist our help. Um, one I call the slippery slope. Uh, if someone suffers from food illiteracy, then they probably eat the Western diet. They eat processed food and sugar. And what's amazing to me is if you eat a clean diet, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to have a hot Instagram bod, but you will probably lose a lot of weight by not eating sugar and processed food. And a lot of people get really angry when you bring this up. They go, dude, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. Pretty soon, you won't be able to eat anything, man. And you really can't help someone who goes down that slippery slope. Let's say you, you got a friend. He's never home at night with his family. He's always out partying with his buddies. He's living at the age of 40 like he was when he was 16, high school life. And you say, dude, you should stay home with your wife and kids a couple nights a week. And he goes, what are you trying to do, man? Lock me up in a cage? Pretty soon I won't be able to do anything. And so people get defensive uh, with a slippery slope. And your tree branch is useless at that point. The other thing is um, we normalize pathology. What you do every day is your normal, even if it's not normal. I've known, I've had students who lived in neighborhoods that were so dangerous because of gunfire, they had to sleep in the bathtub. This was the early 90s when crime was horrible in L.A. And, uh, you know, sleep, and for them, sleeping in a bathtub at night was their normal. But it's not normal. Um, it's not normal at all. <clears throat> and what happens is what we experience 
uh, becomes our normal. You know, all of us looking for our little safe spaces and social media, so we don't know what, what other people are, uh, what their informational diet is, and, and we're getting angry. And that becomes uh, our normal, but it's not normal. Um, the other thing is change hurts. It, we know it hurts, and so it's scary. And I, whenever I think about how painful it is to change your life, I think of a, a cop show I watched as a kid. It was called Adam 12. <clears throat> and there was an episode where, you know, they, they would respond to emergencies. I remember there was an episode where a, a man was crushed by a telephone pole. He's on his back, the telephone pole is on his ribs, and the cops from Adam 12 say, paramedics are coming soon, they're going to get a... Uh, you know, uh, a giant crane thing to pull the, uh, the telephone pole off your ribs. <clears throat> but I want to warn you, when they do that, even, th even though you're telling me you don't feel a lot of pain right now as you're sitting there with this telephone pole crushing your ribs, when they release the telephone pole from your ribs, that's when it's going to hurt. And I just want to warn you for that. And I always saw that as an analogy to uh, changing your life that those initial steps are super painful and I think people resist your tree branch uh, for that reason as well. You know what's weird? Some people will resist a tree branch because the fear of the unknown. They would rather live in a familiar hell than an unknown quantity. Um, People will acclimate to something and say, eh, this is not so bad, even though it's a horrible situation. Uh, you get a lot of that with someone who has a job they hate. They hate their job and they go every day, I'm not going to look for another job, it might be worse. It's disgusting. And so uh, that, that would be one example. Uh, number five, sometimes your social circle is in the same rabbit hole as you, so if you leave the rabbit hole, you're going to lose your friends. And, uh, of course, in psychology, they wouldn't be called your friends. They would be called peop enablers or people who uh, you live uh, with a symbiotic relationship. Symbiosis, that's right. There's mutualism in symbiosis, where the people perceive a benefit from one another, and there's uh, parasitism, where one person preys on the other, sucks the life out of the other. What a concept. It exists in biology, of course. Um, and then finally, uh, ego. What happens with your ego is you invest in something, and it could be bad for you, but because you invested in it emotionally and, and, other, and with money and everything, you, you don't want to let go. But it, you know, you'll see this in a relationship, so-and-so is going to get married to the devil, and everyone knows that person's the devil, and you tell them, come on, man, this person's evil. And the person says, I've invested five years of my life, and I, you know, I'm not going to give up now. Or you'll see this in Shark Tank, where someone has some venture that's failed repeatedly, and the, pe you know, the, the rich people who are uh, sitting there, they're going, ah, this is, this is bad news, man. You need to take your project, your venture, you need to take it in the back of the shack and take it out of its misery, man. And, and the people won't let go because all their hopes and dreams have been invested in it and it's a real blow to your ego. And so some people aren't going to grab your, uh, your, uh, your tree branch. Now, Joe Rogan, I think he's correct about motivational speakers on YouTube, especially if what you're teaching requires expertise specialization, how to be a special ops fighter, how to do kettlebell training, uh, diet, nutrition. I mean, if you don't have a PhD in nutrition or, or something, then if, I, I think you should not get a lot of cr credibility. Where we all get credibility, though, is we've all screwed up in life. We're all experts at screwing up in life, and we can share our screw up with others, and sometimes that will resonate with people, that will motivate people. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever tried to give a tree branch to someone and they lashed out at you, man? Let me know what you think. All right, man, I'm working out with a cold, I guess. That's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, I'm out.